the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What has God called you to do? Whom has God called you to be? Those are critical questions throughout our spiritual journeys, and maybe we, I'm sure, we have struggled with that from time to time throughout of our lives. And it's a question, there are questions that keep coming up and should keep coming up because our lives change, we're in different situations, and still that question is there. What does God want you to do with your life? What is it that God has called you to do and to be? Well, that's what actually all four of the readings for today are all about. The first one is, is about Jeremiah. He was called to be a prophet. He said that to Jeremiah, I'm going to call you to be a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah said, wait, I'm just a boy. I don't have the experience. I don't have the voice. I don't have the knowledge. I can't, I can't do this. And God said, yes, you can, because I'm going to put my words in your voice. And Jeremiah did. He was a prophet to the nations. And the second story is about Jesus. Uh, what you didn't hear uh, is what Jesus said, his quote of Isaiah, right before he said, you know, these words have become mine. But he was quoting the prophet Isaiah. The passage, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then we hit the gospel reading, which you just heard, and Jesus says, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And this all happened in the synagogue in Nazareth, his hometown, his home synagogue. Um, it was a tradition. People would come in and, and um, different people, different men would be asked to read from scripture, would be handed the role, and he was handed the role of, of, of Isaiah. And... Um, and he read it. So it was something very comfortable. He'd been there many times. He probably had read many times. And probably in the congregation, there were friends and family and people that knew him. I mean, they said, wait a minute, this is, this is Joseph's son, right? But they were surprised at the authority he had, at the way he spoke, the way he, the way he proclaimed that message from Isaiah. And he even talked about it graciously afterwards. But, but, his family and friends were not happy. Because the message that he talked about was he told the story of Elisha, who brought healing to some people who were sick, but they weren't Jews. And Elijah did the same thing. Reached out to people but, that were not Jews. So his friends and family were saying, wait a minute, what about us? They got angry. They became a mob. They chased him out of the synagogue, over to the cliff, and was, were about to throw him over the cliff when all of a sudden he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. I mean, I've always been fascinated by that sentence. It's like all of this conflict, all of this anger, and then for some reason it just stopped and he passed through the midst, midst of them on his way. Remember, way is a, is a word that was used throughout Christianity talking about a spiritual journey, a faith journey. Where are we on the way? That means how, how together are we learning more about Jesus Christ and the faith? And so he, he went through this, this conflict and just went about his calling. And he went from there to actually preach to Gentiles. So Jeremiah was called. He said, wait a minute. Jesus was called. He, he engaged in a serious conflict. And yet both 
were true to their call, to do what they were called to do, to be who they were called to be. So what about us? No Jeremiah, no Jesus, but what about us? Because we're all called to follow Jesus. That means that that whole word of call applies to us as well. I mean, in our context, what are the ministries that we're called to participate in? And what kind of person, with what kind of focus, are we called to be? Well, the beauty of the lessons appointed for today is that the other two readings address that. I mean, they have, sort of have some, some helpful tip uh, to, to sort of help us get through it. And, and, and they're, they're obvious, but it's good, to, it's, it's good to hear them again. So the first one is uh, in that psalm, that beautiful psalm. And it's all about having dependence on God. Whenever we experience something or maybe are sick or are scared about our future or whatever. Uh, but the whole, the whole psalm is about depending on God for strength and for hope. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. And so the point here is we, if we put all these lessons, to put these three lessons so far together is when we are not quite sure what we're called to do or who we're called to be, one thing to do is to depend on God. God help me, you are calling me, but wait a minute, I don't know about that. One is just to be, to be sure in our hearts that God is with us as we consider what we might be called to do and be. But there's more. That beautiful reading which we hear all the, all the time at weddings, but uh, it's also just such a, it's, it's a beautiful statement on, on love, on God's love from 1 Corinthians. Um, and in that, Paul, Paul is very clear to say, you might be a good speaker, you might be a good healer, you might be a good prophet, you might be a good justice person, but if you don't have love in your heart, God's love in your heart, then it's, it's really not a call, it's something you're doing, but it's really not one of God's ministries. And so it's a reminder that as we consider what we're called to do and be, we need to check our hearts. Where are we with this? Is it out of love? Or somebody just telling us to do it? Or do, does it think that it will give us gain? What's the motivation? It can always be, if it's not with God's love, it can always be with God's love just by our saying, God, I'm so glad that you're with me. I feel loved by you. I want to share your truth of Jesus with others. So, next Sunday is an important Sunday, and it's about being called, quite frankly. Next Sunday, we're going to commission um, parish leaders, vestry and wardens, who have been called, and also voted for, but who have been called to move into that ministry of church leadership. We also are going to, we're going to commission them. We're also going to commission many of you who are... Um, ministry leaders who play a particular role in overseeing and developing ministry. We're going to commission you because you have felt called to participate in that oversight ministry. And then we're going to, we're going to commission everybody in church who participates in ministries in this parish. And there's a little trick to it, and we're going to commission you. And I'm telling you up front, just so, just so nobody will feel left out. And the last question is going to be, anybody in this church who are participating in the ministry of worship, please stand. See, there'll be everybody. So the point is that all of us in this place will be commissioned and affirmed for a piece of what we do because we feel called to do it. May this be an opportunity for all of us to reflect on who we are and what we are and what we're doing 
as, a, as an expression of our faith? And think about it and pray about it and see if God might be calling us to do something more or something less because of our faith and through our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen.